Hello again. During this demo, we'll connect the RTPAD1 on a Volvo XC90 and we'll see how this tool will perform in real life. Hello, we'll start the diagnosis. So the tool, it recognized the vehicle. So we have the model year, we have the make, the model, the engine model, the engine size, and the V number, which is a Volvo 2010 XC90, the type of the engine and the V number. We'll proceed further. Okay, we'll run a health report. So we have the report ready, let's see how many system we have with trouble codes. We have only the engine control module with three fault codes, we'll see what those codes are. Okay. This is the type of the engine. Okay, so we have bank 1 sensor 2, bank 2 sensor 2, and the catalytic converter efficiency. Let's go back, we'll select some live data. Let's see the oxygen sensor, so front oxygen sensor signal, bank 1, bank 2, rear oxygen sensor, bank 1, rear oxygen sensor, bank 2, let's open the graphic mode. Just wait a bit for the data uh, to be shown uh, in every single uh, graph mode.
also, as you see, the front oxygen sensors are performing more or less um, the same. So the graph mode is more or, more or less the same. Uh, but we have a big difference um, on the rear oxygen sensors. So this is bank one, this is bank two. Again, bank one, bank two. The front oxygen sensors, more or less the same graph mode. The rear oxygen sensors, very different graph mode. Probably we are dealing with the exhaust leak here, but uh, we'll see that uh, problem later on. Uh, the purpose of this um, demo is to show you the graph mode so you can record this session and view it later on for further anal uh, analysis or uh, uh, pinpointing the problem so more or less we are done here you see again the huge difference that exists between the rear oxygen sensors the front ones more or less are let's say creating or producing the same uh, graph the same performance more or less we'll go back here and we'll select another system Let's see the transmission module. We know that we do not have any code on the system. We'll read some data. So engine speed, input speed, output speed. Okay. Okay, the engine speed the input speed okay so based on those two signals we can assume that the torque converter is working fine because the turbine uh, speed it reaches around 90 percent of the uh, impeller speed so we are okay here let's go back um, let's see what kind of special functions we have here so reset the adoption resetting the counter of transmission oil change very useful functions so you have to perform uh, both of those uh, functions after changing an element including the transmission fluid on a gearbox we'll select another system so let's see the ABS let's see special function checking the brake light switch adjustment I'll click here we have a help help um, mode information that you have to read before proceeding with that function so it says here that the pedal position sensor must have a value of at least 0 0.8 millimeters when the stop lamp switch status shifts from not activated to activated okay let's see this so the brake light uh, switch status it's not activated now I'm just pressing the brake pedal and see what will happen not activated not activated now activated so this it tells me that the brake pedal switch it needs a tiny adjustment I'm trying it again not activated activated 
so the brake switch it needs a tiny adjustment let's go back let's select another module oh steering angle sensor module let's see what data we have here so I'm selecting all of them okay I open the graph mode so we have the steering wheel angle the angle velocity the direction of the steering wheel and the voltage applied to this unit so I'm removing this value I don't need it for now let's see how the steering angle sensor will perform I'm just going to steer a bit the steering wheel left or right I'll start with left side right side left side right side so as you see this is it tells me the steering angle um, and this it tells me how fast the steering wheel was turned and this it tells me the direction where the steering wheel sits so it's right then it goes left again you can record or you can create a report form we'll get out from this system and the last model we'll select is the rear differential electronic module we know that we do not have any issue with this um, uh, node so we'll read some data we'll see the status of the active on-demand coupling system uh, the differential electronic and electronic module status uh, let's see what we'll see here so the active on them on demand coupling status it's okay no normal operation differential electronic module status it's okay the pump current is zero because we are not driving the vehicle but let uh, let's wait for a few moments to see if the pump will kick in ah yeah as you see it kicked in it reaches around uh, 2000 milliamperes a bit higher than 2000 milliamperes which uh, uh, it's uh, where it's supposed to be that uh, uh, that value for more information about this tool please uh, visit our website which is called um, obdmonitor.com beside the volvo diagnostics you'll see other tests we have run with this tool thank you very much for your time.